you may well recognise this as being the garden. I'm trapping from home tonight. I've decided to take advantage of the mild, cloudy and overcast and quite humid conditions. It's a good temperature and within a couple of minutes of the light being on, there's a decent selection of moths coming in. All the conditions are there for a decent couple of hours trapping or more. There are a number of advantages trapping from home. And it's quite surprising because you do get an almost entirely different range of species sometimes. And certainly some species will occur in your garden that you won't catch if you're out in the middle of nowhere. And this marbled beauty is one such moth. Quite beautifully marked and patterned. Very variable though. Hardly any two Marble beauties ever look the same and some can be quite brownish and really look like something else. But in an urban setting such as this, it can often occur in large numbers at the light and will turn up at your kitchen window. One of the commonest moths for doing that. So that's Marble Beauty, one of the first ones to arrive at the trap. I have quite missed trapping at home. This is only the second session I've done. Just don't fancy it a lot of the time and you do get spoiled if you trap at somewhere like this and car. You know that at home you're not going to get the same species range at all or anywhere near the numbers but you can get some very good counts in terms of both moths and species on those particularly favoured nights and suitable nights, rather like this one. Quite a number of moths in Dusky Thorn is in one that we've seen recently at Loudwood and at Miss and Kong. But there's always a difference in species, a marble beauty, rare that I've ever had that anywhere else other than the garden. So it's nice sometimes. Mint moth by Roustra or Rata, and I'll drop a photo in. Most of the moths that I talk about tonight, I'll probably put photos in unless I can get to actually film them. But we'll see what turns up. But it is nice. One big advantage of trapping from home, not that I'm encouraging this, of course, but. It's surprising how a couple of pints of this can see number, moth numbers rise extraordinarily. At least that's what I tell the county recorders. But in all seriousness, this is the kind of trapping session that many of you watching this channel will relate to, or potentially will relate to, because I know that there are a few of you out there that are now thinking or just starting to divulge into moth trapping. It's a great world. It's an addictive pastime and an addictive hobby. But even though I'm trapping at home, I still follow the same rules of principle as always, no matter where I trap. And that's, I wouldn't trap all night. I would always leave at least an hour's complete darkness for the moths to fly off and do the thing and I sit by the light at all times because as I mentioned before a great deal of the pleasure I get in seeing moths come in and seeing the range of moths over the course of a few hours change and moths in a garden change as they come into light some species come in early some species come in well after midnight but we'll play this by ear and we'll see how we go, but we should get quite a few moths enough to show you and keep us interested. Now there's a couple, or well, three have been to the lights of Old Lady, two of which are the large moths 
fly one's just gone down the back of the light but there's one just settled on the ground just off screen but there's definitely three in and I got excited for a second because I thought I'd seen something far more interesting than old lady coming in we'll have to be quick with this because these rarely sit still but this is an old lady and this it's just a very large dull grey moth and very much of its type really to be honest I do well for these here I can have five or six or more at the light there's at least three that's been in so far two of which are still around but this is one of those moths that I don't catch out and about at Ekrin. We never had it at Sherwood Forest, I don't think. And yet, in an urban setting, this moth does really well. So this is one you're likely to get. It's well known for returning to the same roost in a shed or outhouse each night. And they do come much bigger than this. This might be the last we see of this one. But if I put my grubby finger at the side, they do come far bigger than this one. So that's old lady just large but dull and gray not a great deal going for it it is quite nicely marked when fresh but in terms of color it's extremely lacking but one that you'll get if you trap in your garden in many ways Moth trapping from home can not say cheating, but it seems effortless. I just sit here poised with a pint and trusty Annette. Wait for the moths to come in. Most I like to come into the light, but if there's any danger of them just going over, which some moths do, that's when Annette comes to the fore and plays her part. And I like to sit to the side and see moths come in from down the garden. And moths do. I've had a lot of moths that have flown in from over the bottom of the garden there and the lilacs at the bottom have come directly from the south straight into the light. And then they've stayed at the light and gone up and carried on north. You get that a lot with silver wise, silver wise the nectarine on the valerian and all the flowers in the garden. The nectar at dusk build up some sustenance and some energy and then up and off and often continue north. Migration is a definite thing and observable even within the confines of a terraced garden. Well, this represents the first of the true sort of autumn moths. And this is a centre-barred sallow, which has just dropped in. Beautifully marked, beautifully coloured. That real sort of golden yellow colour. In fact, the camera doesn't do this moth justice. It's quite amazing how colourful a lot of our autumn moths are. And many of them are variables almost of this species usually in terms of coloration there's a lot that are yellowish or yellow colored so this is center barred sallow it'll turn up frequently in woodland if you're trapping in woodland and isn't all that uncommon if you're trapping in suburban sites or gardens such as this so it's a nice moth for the night so that's center barred sallow and the moths Oh, certainly coming in. Well, there's now three old ladies around the light together. A new one has just come in, so that makes four for tonight. It's the one that's flying around the light now. It's the freshest. Well, I'm saying that, there's some damage to the wings, but it's the largest. Two on the wall at the back, and one just out of screen on the path on the left. They never are attracted to the light as are most moths and quite often 
they do linger in the garden and they'll fly quite delicately at times around all the plants and i think the caterpillar's probably been in this garden long before now but it's a species that i've never seen while in the larval stage but i think it almost certainly does breed here so that's four old ladies now that have come in now here's a common a very common garden moth and a moth many people will have seen without probably realizing that it's a moth at all but this is emelina monodactyla the so-called common plume and it is the commonest of all the plumes really i get this regular in the garden and it does breed or has bred in the garden and certainly next door's garden and it's quite remarkable i remember seeing these years ago before i got into moth and you'll often see them on wooden fences as you walk down the street always in this sort of t-shaped position but believe it or not these are wings quite amazing really those wings do open up a little bit to enable the moth to fly but this is its typical resting position and it's a moth that many people will have noticed so this is emelina monodactina very common especially in urban areas it's all right i'm watching an old lady a very big old lady that came in thought about coming down to the light but has gone up and off but i fear that i've missed the best moth because i'm 100 percent certain that 10 minutes quarter of an hour ago i had a moth similarly that i saw about 10 foot in the air and the underwing marking suggests that it was clifton nonpare possibly one may well come in again but there are times when you only need the briefest of glimpses in order to determine an id even of a moth flying but this was only about four feet above me i was kneeling down at the time and my heart did stop and i was lost for words it's all right i haven't just seen another one i was just thinking about it but that's one of the great things about gardens moths because they have wings can turn up anywhere i know they are usually habitat specific many species but flying between habitats moths many moths will fly over urban and suburban gardens that's why your garden can be a great place for moths even if it's not planted out this one is planted out to attract moths but moths will turn up even if you are limited and have no transport to drop away from your back garden it's well worth trapping well worth getting into moths don't sit there and think well it's not worth me trapping or getting into moths because i can't go into woodland and trap during the summer months yeah just as likely to catch something really rare in your garden as you are if you go somewhere out into the countryside or to a nature reserve moths don't read books and they don't have road atlases so they don't always know where they're supposed to be so the rarest of moths can turn up in your garden even moths from africa there's something else big just flies in it's another old lady we're doing well for old ladies if you are new to moth trapping and are wanting to venture into your garden and use a light to attract moths you may well be put off from using the bulb that i do which is a 125 watt mercury vapor bulb they are incredibly bright i'm fortunate here i have houses and gardens backing up onto my garden as is typical with terraced gardens if i didn't have the large ceanothus and the two large lilacs at the bottom of the garden 
I may well have to shield the light from the trap here from the bedrooms opposite. As far as I know, as long as no light strays into any bedroom windows, you can't be prosecuted or told off for using a bright light. It's only when that light goes in to people's bedrooms and people could argue that it stops them or affects their sleep that problems can arise. So you may well want to start with a less brighter light, something like one of the actinics or a black light, as people often use. They're less sort of intrusive into other people's gardens and affect other people's sort of lives and personal well-being far less than the potential of a mercury vapour bulb. So that's something to bear in mind. Some neighbours might be particularly awkward and not like a bright light night after night in your garden, but I don't use the trap night after night. Never have done. Maybe two or three times a week, four at the most, in favourable weather conditions. And that's something I've always done. So if you are going to trap, you need to bear in mind the views and feelings of other people you don't want to upset your neighbors you want your neighbors on your side i'm fortunate i have no problems and i'm able to sight the lights lower down to the ground in such a manner that it doesn't go into other people's houses if anything they affect me by not shutting up and never being quiet but one thing I do enjoy when I'm trapping at home is when everybody does eventually go to bed and Market Warsop finally falls silent. That's silent apart from me talking all the time. Now of all the moths that have come in, this is the most common moth that you're going to get at your suburban or urban trap really. Or at least the commonest of the noctuids. And that's if you trap in August and into September. This is a square spot rustic. There's another moth very similar, like a smaller version, small square spot. And the two are quite difficult to separate. Both are pretty much variants on this that you see before you. And this, looking at it through the phone now, is quite attractive. But they really are quite dull. If there's ever a moth that you don't want to come back in another life has, it's small square spot or square spot rustic, as in this instance. But they can vary, and the variation is usually confined to the ground colour. They can be almost a brick red to very nearly black. So it's a species, along with a small square spot, that you need to learn and pick up. But a very common moth, especially in suburban traps. Among the moths that are in are three of these. This being a dusky thorn. Very nicely marked as well. One of the commonest thorns that you'll get to your urban and suburban trap. Nice. To, never had three here before, but yeah, two, yes. But it's a regular, at least at this trap. So... It's a moth that you can expect from your urban gardens and your suburban gardens. Lovely moth though, beautifully marked. Well, had another new addition to the garden. In fact, it's in here at the moment. I may well be able to get a, a bit of footage, but in the pot. And I have just checked to see what this moth status was in the garden and I haven't had it before and I thought I had and it's a tawny barred angle it's never even in the most pristine of conditions it's never the most sparkling moth you've ever seen but it is decently marked and so this is a nice one to add to the garden lovely and once again we've just gone, gone past midnight the very quickly approaching three hours. I really don't know where three hours has gone. So we'll see if any other goodies, such as this one, turn up. But we'll see if I can film it first. 
well the camera work might be a little bit shaky but this is it there's two general forms of Tory Bard angle if I remember right it's not a moth I've seen in recent years but it was fairly frequent at light in Sherwood Forest especially in the country park area usually holds its wings in similar fashion to this doesn't go completely flat but I don't care it's a new species for the garden we're well over 500 species now so I'm very pleased with this moth of the night so far along with the Clifton non pare of course we're on to about quarter past midnight so now it's time for the hard stuff if I told you that this was orange and lotus flower tea how many of you would believe me you probably think I'm going soft but I had plans on packing up after three hours which would be 25 past midnight but now that tawny wild angle has come in and it's worth staying out for a bit longer especially while it's in perfect conditions now the mere mention of the name pug will often strike fear into many newcomers to moth trappings hearts but it really shouldn't this is a double striped pug and this is a nice fresh example so this is a nice pristine one in which to get your eyes in so to speak it is quite easy to identify it has those two narrow bands going across the four wings and almost appearing to go across the hinder wings although they don't the hinder wings are generally various shades of grey but when double strike pugs are as fresh as this one it makes the identification relatively easy it's quite a smallish pug some specimens are smaller than this and quite often the, po the forewings are fairly pointed but when it's fresh like this it's an absolute cracking little moth so that's double strike pug it'll turn up in your garden in urban areas and suburban areas as well as pretty much anywhere in rural situations so it's a good one to learn this because this is one pug that you're guaranteed to attract to your NV light. Well, we're heading up to one o'clock in the morning. And this trapping session has been quite a bit longer than what I was anticipating, to be honest. I'm over 40 species and I'll probably give it to one o'clock and then call it a night. Moths are still coming in it's mostly large yellow underwings and square spot rustics they're the two that are mainly coming in the two species but it has been an extremely enjoyable few hours well three and a half hours by the time i pack up and one big advantage of trapping at home you've got not much to pack up and no journey home just put everything in the shed lock the shed door and the kitchen door and you're in bed within five minutes so trapping from home does have many advantages <laughs> 